We're here rolling up to Lowe's in our Hobbit britches, ready to make some barn doors on a daggone budget. I'm here at Lowe's and I wanted to get a barn door. That's what I'm wanting right now. But these are $335 for the entire kit. I'll have to sell feet picks to get that. So we're not getting that. We're going to go the DIY route and use what we got. Well, let's go see how much the individual prices are on the kit and the handles. These days, due to the barn door craze, Lowe's has a specific area in their stores for like barn door and barn door accessories. It has everything from different handles to different hardware to different tracks. There's so many things. Did you say this here? I just got that for the shot. <laughs> There are so many options for color choices too, and usually I'm indecisive, but when I can find matte black, matte black trumps everything, so I'm grabbing two of these matte black handles and then moving on to the trim. I'm trying to do this on a budget, so white wood is going to be where it's at. White wood is the cheapest wood that you can find at Lowe's. Pine is better quality, but it comes at a much steeper price, so I always choose white wood over anything. I usually walk right by those primed pieces of trim, especially the primed pine, but you can get these in bulk savings. The more you get, the cheaper you get them individually for. So I always keep an eye on that. Because I had to buy several pieces of this trim, I went on and got these, the already primed one. It's gonna make my life so much easier when it comes to painting. Ooh, we're getting this mobile mansion together, son. So let's break down the cost difference. Now, if you were to get the brand new barn door and barn door kit that I showed you guys, if you got two of them to do the double barn doors that I'm wanting to do, you would be spending about $700. That's a whole lot of feet picks. I simply don't have $700 for barn doors. I, I don't. I have a set amount of money that I can spend on barn doors and I don't have anything over that. And my feet are too crusty. I couldn't even sell them on clearance. <laughs> Some of us have no choice but to do things DIY. $700 for the two manufactured barn door and barn door sets. Now that method, if you have that kind of money or you've been saving and you've saved up that kind of money, if you can afford that, then that would probably be the more convenient an easier way to do this if you're going for this look. There are some pros and there are some cons. One of the cons is definitely the price. The price is just insane, $700 is a whole lot of Big Macs. I can't justify $700 for barn doors when we're so capable of doing it ourselves and doing it on a budget. But I can't lie, it is definitely more convenient and it's easier. The pros to doing it ourselves is for two barn doors, we spent a subtotal of $297. After taxes and everything, we spent a whopping $326, which is still cheaper than even one of those barn door kits. Now, upon doing further investigation though, I have seen on the internet that Home Depot actually has barn door kits for $199. If that's true, I haven't seen it with my own eyes, but I've been hearing some buzz about it on the internet. If that is true, I think they're raw barn doors and you would have to stain them or paint them, but that is a much better deal than the barn doors and barn door kits at Lowe's. That is a steal compared to the Lowe's one. The Lowe's one is finished, but honestly, $335 for a barn door at Lowe's or $199 for a barn door at Home Depot. Finished or unfinished, the Home Depot one is a steal and it's definitely worth getting the paint or the stain or however you're going to paint or stain it on the side because even adding that stuff is going to be significantly cheaper. You get $135 savings going the Home Depot route. That's if you're doing one door. If you're doing two doors, you get $270 savings. So that's quite a bit of savings. So what all did I get for $297? I got two barn door kits, just the barn door kits themselves. Each of those were $59.98. I also got two of the larger barn door handles. Each of those were $15.96. I got a paint roller and a paint pan for $6.98. Now I could have omitted this because this is something that I can use for other projects, not just this one, but I wanted to add that in there because I didn't have any at home. Home, and this is realistically what I would have had to buy in order to get this project done. So I wanted to add that in there. I got that for $6.98. I got a bunch of white wood to trim out the doors to make them a little bit larger so that they're not swinging whenever we hang them up because the doors we're using, they are significantly smaller than the opening. So I needed to bulk them out a little bit so they don't look funky up against the wall. We don't want them just to swing in. I spent $59.64 on that white wood just to trim out and bulk out the door. So that's where a bunch of the budget went. 
the white wood and white wood is the cheapest wood. I'd have been in trouble if I'd went the pine route. All of those pieces of white wood were $4.97 a piece, but all of it added up together was $59.64. I got primed pine trim because I felt like the primed would be easier to paint because my barn doors aren't gonna be stained, they're gonna be painted, which is how I'm getting away with using doors that we already have. If I were going to stain it, it wouldn't work because these are like that manufactured wood doors. They have that slick coating on it. Sanding it down would be a nightmare. And I'm not even sure you could stain it after it's sanded because it's really not like real wood on the top of it. It's more like a laminate kind of thing. So I'm painting, so that's how I'm getting away with using these doors. If I were going to stain these doors though, I wouldn't be able to use these. Those prime trim pieces though, they were 917 and all together they were 27.51. And then lastly, I got thicker primed pine pieces of trim for $8.52, but I got more of those. So I ended up spending $51.12 on those. That's the breakdown of everything that I spent. I already have the caulk that I need here at the house. I already have the paint choice, which is the same paint that I painted these cabinets with. I'm using that to accentuate these cabinets and kind of make that the running theme throughout my entire mobile home. So I didn't need to get paint and I didn't need to get caulk. I didn't need to get stain or anything like that because we're not staining anything. I already have a piece of wood that I'm gonna use for the anchor for the two barn door kit sliders. I already have that piece of wood too. So I didn't need to get an anchor or anything for the barn door kit itself. I already had that stuff. I already had it here at the house. There are other parts to this room makeover in this double wide mobile home. If you guys have missed that, I have a playlist linked down below from start to finish on everything we've done to this double wide since buying it. It is a 1991. It's a fixer upper, but we're loving every minute of making this our mobile mansion. I'm having a blast. <laughs> go through the rest of the mobile home and we're going to put brand new doors in so we're reusing these old doors that came with this double wide and we're going to turn them into my dream barn doors shane has this habit of making my dreams come true
up with a creative and affordable way to bulk out these doors because these are just bedroom style doors and we needed them a little bit bulkier to give us that traditional farmhouse rustic hanging barn door look so we took this little trim that we found at Lowe's and we lasagna layered it <laughs> to bulk it out I mean we just layered it like a lasagna one piece on top of another piece and we attached it all with brad nails so we didn't have to do no gnarly screw holes or anything everything trim wise is attached to this door with brad nails we just didn't know how much the door could take and we didn't want to put a bunch of pressure on it by using screws while we were concerned about the old door we were also concerned with the wood we didn't want the white wood to splinter Perfectly, he executed himself 
perfectly. But Jill is, is a total. I was about to say, Jack is Adam Sandler. He is. Adam Sandler. And he <laughs> Most of his that. characters are don't, just Adam don't, Sandler. We, don't, we will not stand for Adam Sandler's slander. That's not slander. Yes. I he, mean, it's just true. No, it's not. He's a phenomenal. No, he's a phenomenal actor, and he's good at acting in different roles. I mean, look at Waterboy. That ain't Adam Sandler. <laughs> Little Nicky. I <laughs> like, Little Nicky is the one. So, okay. okay. There's the Adam Sandler, the sarcastic Adam Sandler, which is my favorite. Okay. There is the Jill. Sad. <laughs> no! Not only does Adam Sandler inspire my humor, but he also inspires my style. I literally go out on a daily basis looking like a mom version of Adam Sandler, and I'm okay with that. But the guy is a genius. And he I, was just I, now getting the recognition that he should have had a long time ago. I didn't say he didn't make good movies, right? Great movies. So, like, Wedding Singer is a great movie. But him and Drew Barrymore are like soulmates. They really are. Uh, no offense to his wife. I mean, like, a friend soulmate. Grown Ups and Grown Ups 2 are guilty pleasures of mine because I know that they're not really good movies, but I like them. They don't, they don't say that. He put a lot of hard work into those movies. Those were vacations for me and his friends. And he had a lot of hard work into them. Listen, he's, he's a genius. He not only works, but he goes on vacation. He uses a job to go on vacation. And take all his friends too. That's hey, I'm not genius. saying this. I like Adam Sandler. I like him. You know, Cubie Halloween. Cubie Halloween. I like that, that movie. That was a phenomenal I shouldn't like that movie based on my prerequisites. But I like that movie. I love that I like Halloween. Ridiculous Six. Uh, nobody <laughs> likes Ridiculous <laughs> Six. That's my favorite Taylor Locker movie. Yeah, no. <laughs> First of all, don't he's Jacob Black. Secondly, no, he's the dude from Ridiculous Six. He is Jacob Black. <laughs> I don't like these serious movies. Like Cobbler depressed me. Cobbler and and funny people. Surprisingly, it was really hard to get the caulk in the little corners. It's also really hard though to get like the paint to not bubble up because it wants to puddle. So I'm having a hard time getting the paint smoothed on these, but we're making it work. I'm doing two coats in total on the door. Two coats of that paint is all it takes because that paint is so good. It is so good. I will, as long as I can That's afford Sherwin it. Williams, right? Yeah, as long as I can afford it, I will always use Sherwin Williams. Now, if it's out of the budget, I can't help it. But as long as it's in the budget. If it's out of the budget, we're going Color Place, baby. Color Place is the OG of what we used when we started doing renovations. Yeah, and I can't, I can't hang on it. Well, it there's only one thing I will hang on it. What? That's because Walmart barely has any of it. Well, that <laughs> they're facing the Color Place paint out. So like in Walmart you can hardly you can hardly find color place anymore because they're phasing it out. Walmart's paint, the color place itself isn't the problem. Yeah. But the employees sometimes oh. mix it weird. It's because you'll you'll hit the button for the employee. And I ain't got nothing against the person that comes and does it, but the person that comes and does it is like Billy who works over in electronics. Yeah. Billy, who works in electronics, doesn't know how to mix the paint. Julie from Jewelry doesn't understand how to mix the paint. So you ask for like rose quartz, rose, and you get like pepto bismol pink. Yeah. You know it's bad when, when Billy from Electronics or Julie from Jewelry comes, but when it's Rudy from Meats, get ready. <laughs> Miss Spot. I told you. Oh, don't do that. You missed the spot. I haven't even gotten it yet. I haven't gotten that either. Yeah, you have. No, it's all painted down here. I have to do the there. second coat. That, that's one of the two coats if you don't hurry from getting there. No. Now. Yeah. What? Well, you put the the blind girl on paint duty every time. You want me to put the blind girl on caulk duty? Does her breath smell better now? No, I'm not gonna try that. Come here. Let me smell your breath. Smelling soupy dookie. <laughs> soupy dookie. <laughs> 
No, that is not. You need to eat your mint. You don't learn to eat your mint. Moonpie, does your breast smell like soupy dookie? <laughs> All right, explain what you're doing, Shane. I'm coughing. I'm putting coffee in the cracks. marking out his spots these are the handles that y'all saw me purchase at Lowe's they are heavy duty they're thick they're matte black I want all of my hardware accents in this house to be the matte black I just think the contrast between the matte black and the green taupey color and the white and the warm floors I just think that's gorgeous so anywhere I can get away with using the matte black hardware you know I'm going to use it. I've always liked the black hardware though, even in the old trailer. I veered more towards the black hardware and stuff. I thought the contrast looked really pretty in there, but in here, the black just pops against this white wall and against that green too. You can see here, it pops. And I'm a fan of the exposed barn door hardware. A lot of people, Shane was even talking about how he could hide it in a shadow box if I wanted him to. But I think one of the most gorgeous parts of the barn door set is the hardware. The hardware is really pretty and it just like makes it pop. It gives it that rustic feel. I am becoming a fan of rustic. I think my style is kind of evolving from Hobby Lobby Farmhouse, which mind you, don't let anybody make you feel bad if you have Hobby Lobby Farmhouse in your house, in your home, because Hobby Lobby Farmhouse is gorgeous. I don't care what the internet says. The internet right now is in the habit of tearing down the Hobby Lobby look and the farmhouse look, and I will disagree until I am out of breath that I think the Hobby Lobby look is gorgeous, and I think that the farmhouse look is gorgeous. A lot of my home is based off the farmhouse, the modern farmhouse, but it's beginning to get a few rustic touches. If you like it, don't worry about it. If you like it, don't worry about it. You heard it there. If you like it, don't worry about it. I don't care what anybody says. TikTok right now is in this thing where they're like, oh my gosh, farmhouse is done. This is ugly. And showing pictures that they get off of the internet of people's homes, actual people's homes. And it has like the Hobby Lobby decor and the very Christian decor that you can get in the aisle at Hobby Lobby. Listen, I'll go walking down the aisle in Hobby Lobby and a Pentecostal in me comes out. They got some good decor and good Christian related decor. But the internet's in the habit right now of showing pictures of these people's houses and dragging them. And I think that that is wild because design, home design, is very subjective. It's very much based off of your preference and your style. And not everybody's gonna have the same preference and not everybody's gonna have the same style. And if you do, then it's not very unique and it's not very you, right? So like a lot of the mainstream people, they go and they follow this one specific design. And I like to get a lot of ideas from designs like that. But I don't limit myself to that kind of design because it wouldn't be me. I would just be replicating something that I saw on the internet and it wouldn't give me the homey feel that I go for in my house. Above everything, above the beautiful decor, above the trendy farmhouse vibes, above all of that, I want my home to feel comfy. And it's not gonna feel comfy if I've just replicated something that I saw and put it in here and I'm not even really happy about it. I'm just doing it to do it. It's better when it's a little bit different. It's better when you tweak it a little bit. It's better when it's unique to you and your style. The matte black, 
ain't going nowhere because I love the matte black. The farmhouse vibes ain't going nowhere because I love the farmhouse vibes. I'm trying different things along with the farmhouse vibes, but that's been a big thing throughout my home, even at the single wide trailer, is I liked farmhouse, but I didn't limit myself to farmhouse. I kind of put boho, chick, farmhouse, everything. If I liked something, I saw it and I tried to make it fit within my home aesthetic. And that's constantly what I'm doing. I'm just trying to fit whatever I like into my home aesthetic. And if it don't fit, I make it fit. She's making fun of me clearing my throat. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. I love those doors, A. Eh? <laughs> I love them. I cannot have anything else in this room that is that green color or I'm gonna overdo it. And you can't overdo a good thing. So the green Topi color in here, it's Oyster Bay by Sherwin Williams. In here is just gonna be on my cabinets and on the door right there. That way it's cohesive. It kind of ties the room together, but I'm not overdoing it, which could be really easy to do. I have a habit of going all in. <laughs> it's all or nothing with me. So it's a wonder I don't have like green everything accented throughout here. But I've learned over the last couple of years that a little goes a long way, especially when you're looking at a complimentary stain choice or a complimentary paint choice. Well, we got the An accent color, a little, with an accent color, a little goes a long way. Oh my gosh. Ooh. So, none of my, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's unnecessary. None of my decor needs to be in this color family. With the decor, whenever we go to decorate this in the next video, I'm going to focus on different textures. Not different woodsy tones, but definitely the wood texture. One thing that I do oftentimes go overboard with is the stain choice. I usually put it everywhere and I'm okay with that. I like that. It kind of gives it a cabiny, homey vibe thing. And I'm up here on a hill surrounded by woods. So, so the more cabiny, the better, right Shane? Yeah. Do you want to explain to them about these? Oh yeah, bring them up here. Okay, so where we did this door DIY, it's a little bit thicker than a snicker. It's really not that thick compared to like, look at this y'all. Like it's really not that thick. I feel like it's thinner than your average barn door. It's definitely thinner than the ones that we had before. So these are the, what are they called? Uh, hex bolts. Hex bolts that came with the barn door kit. These are not long enough. They're not long enough. So Shane had to go to Lowe's and get longer ones. They're metric hex bolts. Thankfully, I took one with me and had to kind of match it up with the others and I figured it was the 3 8 by three inches is what I needed. I also bought 3 8 by three and a half inches just in case if these weren't long enough, but they're long enough. that we had actually it's wood that it's not scrap we hadn't cut it we right? hadn't used it we so hadn't used it we got it for be used for another project that uh it, it was a uh off the records project that i was going to do oh okay I never got to okay one exchange project it, we had an extra so that's what we're using for the header board which is the anchor that the hardware goes onto that connects it to the studs in the wall basically like i was telling you guys about the beams the ceiling beams we had to have that anchor in order to connect it to the anchor which is connected to the studs in the ceiling same concept just not shadow boxed out we're gonna have it open so that you can see the, the barn door hardware because i like it that way you can cover it though all you gotta do is get a little bit creative. Me and Shane were thinking up of ways we could cover it if we wanted to, but I don't want to. Also, that would require more wood. And while I do have the wood to do it, I really have that wood set aside for a whole different project. So I don't wanna go through that wood. I wanna keep that wood for that project because I don't wanna run out of wood for that project. Forever interrupting me with some sort of saw or tool or something. I'm using my special walnut stain. I keep 
every time I want to call it weathered oak, man. Every time. I get a lot of questions about the ding. The ding happens every time my door opens and that's out of necessity. It can get annoying, but if you have a kid with autism or any other developmental delay or anything like that, then I would highly suggest an alarm. Um, not only an alarm system, I think everybody should have one of those, but like an alarm that lets you know when the windows and the doors are opened. So if you hear that thing, just know it's my, it's my door alarm. And it's letting me know that somebody's either going out or coming in. I'm gonna try to start taking better care of my paintbrushes because I buy way too many paintbrushes. I mean, way too many. If I would just take care of them and let them soak after I use them, I wouldn't have to buy near as many as I have to. And it would save me a lot of money on the projects too, like a lot of money. I'm obsessed. Thank y'all for hanging out with me. I hope y'all have a blessed morning or not, whatever it is, wherever you're at. Know that I love you, but Jesus loves you so much more. I'll see y'all later.